This time of the year makes us all think about family and the importance of keeping them safe. Just like my mom did over 30 years ago by choosing Honda. You can lease the 2018 Honda CRV LX all wheel drive for only $197 per month. That's peace of mind for only $197 per month. I'm Jason Perico for Bianchi Honda, and I promise to help you find the right Honda for your family. Welcome back. Time now for the Gannon Golden Knights Coaches Show. He is the head coach, Brad Rizicki. <coughs> coach, welcome back. Thanks, Alex. Sorry to miss you last week. I would love to spend more time on the game against Cal, the Vulcans, 29-15. Uh, to 15. Uh, that's a great win against a great team in the PSAC West, one of the best. I mean, year in and year out. Yeah, and especially the way they're playing right now. You know, they I don't think they lost a home game since 2013 in the PSAC West, and that's been a long time. You know, I know our program on the field has never beat them. I mean, we had one year where they forfeited a game, but you know, that's the first time. You know, we, we've been in every game, and the kids, I told you, if they just got a one <clears throat> a win, confidence goes a long way, and it happened with Seton Hill. <clears throat> we closed out a game in the second half, and it trickled right down into Cal. I mean, it really did. The kids played hard. They played, executed our game plan. Jason Dombach has a couple weeks under his belt now playing quarterback, and we're extremely efficient. You know, offensively, if you look back at the game, Marcus Jones just ran over some people and really took the game over in itself. But the defense had three critical three and outs in the second half that really iced the game. So it was a team effort, you know, from the coaching staff to the players. It was a fun one, to fun bus ride back. And it's always fun to go beat someone at their homecoming. And a great team. Uh, what are some trends when, when you've won these games? What are the trends that you've seen? What are the things that have to happen for like the boxes you have to check for the Golden Knights to win football games right now? Because as you said, you've been in it. It's one or two bounces, and your, your record's a lot different than it is right now. Yeah, if you still look at it, we've been, you know, even last week against IEP, we had the lead in the second half. We've I think besides Westchester is the only game where we haven't led in the second half, but we were winning that game seven nothing and had a chance to go up fourteen nothing and drop the pass. Um, but you know, it's it, there, there's there's multiple, a lot of different things. You know, there's some things we can't control. Right, what's in house? <laughs> yeah, um, that that have affected some outcomes of games. Um, but you know, I think just the psyche of the kids. You know, sometimes we forget. We talked about as a coaching staff. There's a lot of people because I'm on the defensive side of the ball that didn't play for us, like Jay Bullock last year, AJ Satcher, who are older ones, but Keith Thompson and Reggie Hamlet are starting. They're true freshmen. You know, there's a lot of them that weren't in the scheme. We're, the scheme is brand new for those guys. So I think we've gotten better defensively over time, and I think it's we've gotten healthier and found our rhythm offensively as time goes on. We lost critical offensive linemen and Kylie Smith. So when those are moving parts in there, even with the receivers moving them around, it's still – you know, functioning and getting, you know, used to the people that are on the field. And then it's a matter of confidence. It goes a long way, especially in the psyche of an 18 to 22 year old. I mean, we, we do as much as we possibly can to have them compete in practice and different things we do. But in the end, Alex, they have to go out and win a game. And you saw Martell Davis return that 100 yard touchdown against Seton Hill and you're icing that game in different ways. It just breeds into a better kid the next week in practice. And then that carries over going against the Cal team was really good. And you can see, you know, we're at halftime, you know, it's a tie score. You can see the confidence, or we're up three. You can see the confidence with the kids. It's just different. They believe. And it just trickles down. It has a lot. Psyche has a lot to do with football players. Is the defense too complicated at times, or is it the fact that you've had to move guys to different positions? You have to learn a completely different set of responsibilities based on the position. It's, just, it's definitely the second one. I think if you interviewed our kids, they would say it's probably the so they're most simplistic. Because they're confused when they get moved from right to left, for example, and, and now they got to think about it reverse in the in the mirror yeah and it take it's taken me a little bit of time to figure out you know where the, the best pieces are martell davis on the back end instead of having him down and dorian jones up instead of on the back end just little things like that um are a big deal so they've been comfortable more where they're at now um schematically too the different things that we're doing I, it's you know we're a little bit hybrid from week to week because of our injury issues to this point where i've got to kind of be creative to try to take away what offenses are doing best against us and try to keep the scheme so it's not overly complicated and completely different. So there's there's things that we've kept the same always that from a technique standpoint, but we have our little variations from week to week. So, no, you know, it's it, there's a bright future, but right now, you know, we're writing up, I think, 10 medical red shirts. So that kind of tells you, you know, what's happened to us in the first four games of the season. And that, I know you better to think that you'd use that as an excuse, but those are things that you simply can't, you can't really plan to you have to use 10 of your red shirts. 
Right? Yeah, well, right. the, the, the medical red shirts. I've had three is the most I've had in a year, but these are just the kids getting an extra year because they were hurt and the, you know, the NCAA came out with a new rule. People got to step up and fill those roles <laughs> Yeah, now. and that, that's where it hurts you is when depth happens. You know, you already have depth, but, you know, Keith Thompson's playing linebacker for us. We didn't think Keith was going to play for us. That's truth be truth. And Howard, Jeremy Page got hurt. You know, Aaron Webb has stepped in and done an unbelievably great job today, but James Sims has hobbled from week to week. He comes out, he plays his tail off when he's in there. So, you know, everyone's hurt at this point in time, though, so we can't use it as an excuse right. and a crutch. This has just been more on this end with Gannon than I've ever had, you know, since I've been there. And, you know, the kids have lined up. We've been in every game, so, I, you know, the kids are playing their tail off. And the one thing I was extremely proud with them, because there's a lot of, you know, you talk about psyche and, and emotions with kids. When you're 0-5, you know, an 18- to 22-year-old, they lose motivation when you're waking up at, at 6 o'clock in the morning practice on Tuesdays. My kids have never wavered, and they've gone out and played hard and it finally paid off for them against Seton Hill and then they come back and they beat Cal down to something this hasn't done in 2013. I told them you know I'll, I'll take losses if it develops culture in my program um, and I think that's what's happened with these guys there's a no quit attitude and I told them you know I'm not beating up the academics or anything like that but what they've learned from perseverance through the course of this year being 0-5 and, and find a way to get through it and being tougher than the situation I don't know if they'll ever learn that in a classroom you know that's life and at some point in time in their life, they're going to be 0 and 5, whether it's you know, they got let go of a job or, you know, they're having problems they, you know, with their children or whatever, but how they bounce back and how they not stop trying. So there's a lot of life lessons. I know it's cliche to say it that are taught in the game of football. But this year, I think we've developed culture. And unfortunately, it happened with losses, and especially with my world. You know, everyone, no one comes around me when we're 0 and 5. You know, we beat Cal. I got a lot of visitors coming through my <laughs> office. Yeah, it's, it's kind of how the fickle world works to me. But I, I understand that part of it. Um, but, you know, just drawing the attention now to get people you know, falling back in love with them when they go down and you know, they played hard against IUP is a really good football team so yeah it's 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 been an interesting year from that standpoint you mentioned that you built off of Seton Hill of course did you see it in that week of practice and then I apply the same question to leaving the kit the win against the Vulcans did you see it in this week of practice leading up to IUP is there a yeah, difference yeah absolutely I mean there, there is the kids are just once you win, you know, and you're, you're working your tail off, there's just a difference. There's a different feeling to it from that standpoint. But absolutely, we saw a difference in practice. So leading up, uh, you, you lose this game 43-34. to 34. Let's be honest, there were some conditions out there. Have you ever coached a game quite like that with the lightning delays? No. <clears throat> That's the first. Time. I don't know what how long the game actually ended, like eight hours or nine hours? Six hours and 27 minutes after the scheduled kickoff. Yeah, so it felt like forever for the kids. You know, you're bringing them in and out. And normally situations like that, the, the tougher team wins. They were, you know, IEP's a good football team. Their quarterback is, he's talented. And he did a lot of things that, that, that hurt us on, on Saturday. But I have never been a part of something like that. And it's almost like the air gets let out of everybody on both sides when they come and say, hey, there's lightning eight miles away or whatever it is. But for the safety of the kids, you got to get them off the field. So I get it and I understand it. It just was different than anything I've ever experienced. It seems like in certain moments, you know, for both teams, you would get some momentum going and then bam, lightning delay. And it happened, uh, you basically skipped halftime or you had a halftime for 37 minutes or whatever the delay was. And then you come out, you finish the end of the second quarter, you come together, you agree to, was there a conversation between you and the other coach? And the referees that led to that decision? How's that happen? Yeah, that's, uh, I've, I guess if you're on earth long enough and doing it, you kind of go through everything during the course of your life coaching football. But yes, myself and, and IUP coach had to get together, and I guess there's rules to say that we both agree that we were going to take a three or four minute break in between the second quarter and third quarter just, you know, to get some type of adjustments because we had already been in the locker room for 37 minutes, the first part of it. And then we had to make sure that the game management people were on board and the referees were on board. So, yeah, it was a joint decision. I didn't know that you can do it, but we figured it out and we wanted to get the ball game in and not have to wait to Sunday to play it. So we decided we were going to continue to go until we got the thing over with. So that's the longest delay of the game, it looks like. IUP comes out. Uh, they take the lead in the third quarter. They go up 33-28. to 28 big plays, but you, it seemed you, you then, you get the ball, you, well, you make a big stop on fourth and four, you get the ball back, delay. Did it feel like that to you, or yes. am I making too much of it? A absolutely. So it how do you, what do you say to your team in that moment? You try, you, it's kind of like you have a turnover, and then you give up a big pass, an 80-yard touchdown pass down the field. It's something that, what do you, there's no right words as a coach 
to prepare to come back out for that, is there? Well, you don't want to overcoach in that moment. You know, I thought about it because there's a million things that we could have done, but I told those guys, let's not reinvent our schemes right now. You know, we, want, we know what they're doing for the most part to us and what's hurting us right now. We had them on the same page after we came off that 37-minute lightning delay. And we didn't really get a ton of football after that before the next one hit. <clears throat> so it was just a matter of reiterating what we said <coughs> and moving forward off of it because, you know, we didn't want to go out and, have, and be in something completely different that we could have did it as coaches. We do this for a living. But, you know, it's, it's a matter of getting those guys rested. You know there's 30 minutes as soon as the lightning strike hits before you potentially could go back out. So I kind of waited till about seven minutes before I got back in there and said, hey, we're seven minutes. <clears throat> Here's our focus and kind of brought juice to the room. Well, one time I did that, I think it was five minutes, lightning struck at about three, and then we were back in there for 30 minutes. So I got them all geeked up and like, oh, I got to feed these guys somehow. So there's a lot of things you think about that I guess if I have to go through it again, I'll have a little bit of a better plan, but I didn't want to overcoach in that moment. You mean you actually had to feed them? You had to feed them food in the middle of the game, right? That's not ideal. No, because they they ate the pregame meal at 9 o'clock in the morning. You eat together every game, right? Yeah, 9 a.m. So when you think about it's 4-something, four 4, they haven't eaten anything, and we're still in the third quarter when the second or third the lightning delay happens. So we had our people go out and get Subway, at least bring them back for subs. We get back on the field before the subs happen for about five minutes, and then we're back into another lightning delay. So at least I had subs in there for them at that point in time to eat. So, yeah, it was different. Uh, how about this? Official game time, two hours and 49 minutes. It was around three hours and 38 minutes of delays from the originally scheduled kickoff. A bizarre game. But, again, I, I don't want to make excuses for you. You don't want to make excuses. But they come out, they score, and then you just go right back to the delay. I mean, they come out, they get one touchdown. It ends up being a 43-34 to 34 game. Just goes to show you how close all these teams are and the PSAC West are. I mean, IUP, up and down that roster, it's it's a bunch of guys that could be playing D1 football. Well, that have played D1 yeah, football. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, so you got Mercyhurst coming up this week. The good news, they got to come down here to McConnell Family Stadium, 12 noon. Bad news is the same parody in the PSAC West, dang it. They've been beating some teams lately. Yeah, I mean, they got the same record we do for the most part, and obviously they played the same teams. Our crossover games are a little bit different, but, uh, yeah, this is always a good one. I mean, we're both at the same record right now, and, Every year has been close. I don't expect this one to be any different from that standpoint. And it's not like I have to go and preach and tell our kids what this one means to them. So <clears throat> they know what's at stake. You know, they're excited to get after this one. It's, you know, it's, it's fun to play this game. They got Mercyhurst, then Slippery Rock the week after, and Lock Haven on Senior Day. So it's 12 noon on Saturday, McConnell Family Stadium here downtown. And it's a Jimmy John's and Chick-fil-A promotional day, whatever the heck that means. It'll be some cow dressed up. <laughs> and maybe they can, if we get a lightning delay, Jimmy hey, Johns or whomever can get you know get free food over there for the say guys. It's fast, lightning fast. They, there you they go. Never said that, Coach. I really appreciate it. Good luck on Saturday. Thanks, Alex. That does it for this edition of the Sports Splits.